So if you were to sum it up, if you were to really just sum it up and go, gosh, what happens on the best teams? You'd go, know me for what I do best and focus me around it. Know me, focus me. But if there's one thing, when you look at these two questions and you go, gosh, what would a leader have to do in order to get people to strongly agree to those two things? What would it be? Um, it, it, it would be frequent strengths-based check-ins about near-term future work. And that's free. What, it, what is a frequent strengths-based check-in about work? Here's what it sounds like. I'm going to use you. What, what's your name? Jada? I'm going to say every, every week I'm going to check in with Jada and I'm going to go, hey, um, what are your priorities this week and how can I help? That's all that is. And I'm not going to, don't worry, <laughs> you're about to tell me. I'm not interested. Um, I'm just going through the motions. Um, <laughs> what are your priorities? How can I help? Five minutes, seven minutes. What you're saying to everybody on your team is, look, some things presumably this week are more important than other things. Take five minutes to share five things with me about the next five days. Could you do that? Because a year isn't a marathon. It's 52 sprints. And my job as a leader is to make sure sprint 35 feels as energizing as sprint one. That's hard. I'm not saying that's not hard. But the solution to making it feel like you know what's expected of you and that I know what your strengths are is every week I'm just going, hey, what are your priorities? How can I help? And there are some leaders who go, look, I'd love to do that, but I'm just, I'm too busy. I'm too busy leading. <laughs> yeah, okay. Stop everything else you're doing. Just do that. This isn't in addition to leading. This is leading. That's how you get the best out of people. If you're doing other things, that's fine. If you look at it and go, well, I'd love to do that, but actually I've got, I got too many people. Yeah, you've got too many people or you shouldn't lead because that's what leading is. In some real way, that's what, that's what you're helping people do as coaches too, of course, is you're saying, what can you control is the future? What can you interact with? What strategies can you put together is next week, next week. Strengths-based strategies about near-term future work. I'm sorry if this is a crashing glimpse of the obvious, but there is no tool. There are no systems in place to have this happen. Adobe's doing check-ins and Microsoft's doing check-ins right now. Motorola's doing check-ins, except they're doing them once every six weeks. Okay, whatever that is, that isn't a check-in. You change the cadence, you change what it's about. If I'm checking in with you once every six weeks, I have to prepare. You have to prepare. I have to look back. You have to look back. We both suffer from the recency effect, so we can't think of anything beyond about two weeks. So you make it up and I make it up and the whole organization looks backwards. You hate it, I hate it, and then we all waste our time and then we move on. It's like going to a bad dentist. No one looks forward to it before it goes. While you're there, it's painful and afterwards nothing good happens. So, so think about it as that cadence is really important. Short, light touch check-ins about near-term work. At least that's what we're saying. How it directly impinges on your work as coaches, don't, I mean, it'll vary. But this is what we're out there saying. From all the data, what do we know? We know the team leader makes the difference. We know that there are certain things that the best team leaders do, and it's a we-me juxtaposition. And then what's the one action that all the best team leaders seem to get into the habit of? That. <laughs>